Ranger Melissa stands before a log cabin in a grassy field lined in the distance with pine trees. Hello, it's Ranger Melissa. Welcome to our first Glacier Science video of the season. And thanks for joining us for season two of the Glacier Science video series. I'm so excited to be here today. I'm standing in front of a historic building here in Glacier in the North Fork part of the park. And today we're going to talk about historic buildings, their significance, why they're important, and why the Park Service protects them. But before we do, I want to explain a little bit. This area right here today, it's a spring day. Weather is all over the map. We've got clouds rolling in and some serious weather is starting up tomorrow. In the distance, snowy mountaintops are visible beneath fluffy clouds. And I'm in a big prairie, but it is surrounded by lots of different trees as well. Today, I'm going to get some help figuring out what happened at this site, as well as some other historic buildings in the park with, from our historical architect, Kim Hyatt. Now, Kim has worked in the historical architecture field for many years. He started off as his own private business of working in this field, but then moved on to work at Bryce Canyon National Park and then in the Intermountain Regional Office. So we're excited to meet with him today to learn more. Kim Hyatt stands on the porch to a log cabin. Hey, Kim, how are you today? Grand. Good thank morning. you. Yeah, thank you for meeting us here today. We're excited to learn more about the historic buildings in the park. What are we what are we looking at today? This is the Margaret McCarthy cabin. Margaret and her husband uh, Jeremiah moved here in with their five children in 1908. An old black and white photo of a log cabin with a woman and children on the porch. Text, photograph courtesy of the Glacier National Park Archives. HPF 92725, Jeremiah McCarthy Homestead, 1909. Unknown photographer. And shortly after, in that, that fall, Jeremiah passed away. Margaret was here by herself mm -hmm. in this environment, raising those five children. Uh, it was a two-day grueling journey from uh. Uh, West Glacier, or what was then Belton, okay. just to get here. So you can imagine they were really isolated. On it, horses, right? I mean, they would, they were on yeah, horses. Of course, yeah, yes. Okay. A gravel road surrounded by rows of pine trees winds down a steep hill and into the distance. Text, photograph courtesy of the Glacier National Park Archives. HPF 3716, North Fork Road, 1924. Crable, Charles John, photographer. Yeah, they were isolated in this gorgeous country, but there was a community of homesteaders centered in Big, Big Prairie. A group of people sitting before an enormous log cabin. Many of them wear cowboy hats and carry guns. Text, photograph courtesy of the Glacier National Park Archives. HPF 9930, Bill Adair's two-story log cabin rooming house on Sullivan's Meadow, circa 1913. Later, there was a post office, a store, they even held dances. Mrs. McCarthy was an active member of the North Fork community for almost 25 years. A small log cabin with a crude sign with handwritten text reading U.S. Mail, Kintla Post Office. On the door is a poster of a woman holding a United States flag. Text, photograph courtesy of the Glacier National Park Archives. HPF 9976, Kintla Post Office, 1916. Unknown photographer. This is just a, a one-room cabin. It's about 15 feet by 20 feet. And as you can see, all out of uh, native logs. Uh, but there's a feature around here on the side I'd like to show you. I'd like to point out this. They approach a small stretch of cobblestone randomly installed in the grass. Oh my. Well, that's just out of nowhere, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, now imagine this family, they've got, they, they built a log house, and yet they want to have some modern features and, and, and landscaping decorate the landscape a little bit. Yep. To me, that speaks as a, uh, of a family that intended to stay here and, and make something of this place. They could have just planted rocks in dirt and accomplished pretty much you know, the same thing if they just wanted a path. Right. But, you know, they spent the money and hauled in the cement. Uh, the stones have been dressed a little bit, so it's a flat surface. There's some steps off that direction. This is what I really like about about buildings like this. It, there's a bit of mystery here, and it's always a little bit of a... Detective work? Exactly. Okay. To determine, you know, what was the story behind all yeah. this? We may never know the full story. I love piecing it together. That, so that seems like it would be a big part of your job. It is indeed, and one of the reasons I just love what I do. Yeah, and then just looking at the building, you could get a sense of 
the people and why they came here and what they were doing and maybe trying to accomplish. It sounds like just all of that you can kind of see with the information you have and your knowledge of it. I, I just love the detective work that, that it takes to determine the, the story behind these buildings. A rundown log cabin with a sizable screened in porch in the back. Text, NPS photo. McCarthy cabin prior to preservation work. We, we know from historical records and research that this concrete landing is from additions uh, for a kitchen and a porch that were uh, added to the cabin in the 1950s and 60s. A photo of an excavation site dug around the cabin. A dry erase board sits on a step leading into the cabin. It has text that reads, McCarthy Cabin GNP01-06, EU1, LVL1-3, 0-28 CMBD, July 11, 2001, East Wall. Text, NPS Photo. McCarthy Cabin Site Archaeological Excavation, 2001. Another photo of the excavation site showing a patch of earth dug out along the side of the cabin. Text, NPS Photo. McCarthy Cabin Site Archaeological Excavation, 2001. And they were removed in the early 2000s as, as part of an historic preservation project. And that's pretty typical that preservation work occurs? Exactly. Uh, that is um, all we can do with some of our historic buildings because if we, if we have no use for them and don't at least maintain them, then they fall into disrepair and become a ruin. May still be interesting, but they've lost a lot of uh, the story that they could have otherwise told us. So we preserve even a building like this. We have no use for it right now other than as an, an historic resource to demonstrate to visitors what it may have been like here a hundred plus years ago. Yeah. Various items strewn about the earth, including a large steel box-like structure with items inside. The metal here has rusted significantly. There, there are some other things that I've noticed around this homestead. Um, I'm looking at, you know, these items. And I know that, like, it's really easy to want to touch everything and even, like, sometimes pick it up, take it. But I know how important it is not to do that because all of this is, is part of the story here. So what, what do you... Um, what do you tell people when they go to a historic site and what they should be doing and not doing? Well, you're absolutely right. Just like we tell people in, uh, in wilderness, um, take photographs and leave nothing but footprints. These artifacts also have a story to tell us. A large rusted cylinder surrounded by rusted piping. A dirt cake sink lying in the grass. Archaeological excavations helped us learn more about what was constructed at the site and when. And, and thanks to some of these objects, we, we know that there was plumbing and propane heat here. And we know that there used to be more buildings that were lost in a fire. So there's a lot, to, a lot yet that we can learn about, yeah. about this site, about the way the family lived. We have so many resources to care for. Okay. Just here at Glacier National Park, we have over 700 historic structures. Wow, 700. All of which require some degree of, of preservation effort, uh, documentation. Some of them, unfortunately, are ruins, but for the most part, these are structures that, that uh, um, are being used, even hmm. back backcountry uh, ranger cabins, for example, to uh, to our uh, historic uh, headquarters building, and it takes it takes time. A well kept log cabin surrounded by an open meadow, a United States flag flutters in front of it. Text NPS photo, Belly River Ranger Station, a backcountry ranger station in the park, a brick building with signage reading Headquarters Glacier National Park. Text. NPS photo of headquarters building in West Glacier. It takes people, it does take money. Congress has helped them with that recently, but it, it, will take, it would take a lot more to, to do what we would like to do with everything. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And I can see that this is probably not a priority compared to some of these other buildings that we're utilizing and still actually living in or, or working in. And that's a good point. Yeah, there's a lot that could be learned here. As long as it's not disturbed, you know, in five, ten years, we could come back and probably not have lost anything. Unlock the story. Still exactly. be the detective. Yes, thank you. Awesome. Okay. I was kind of curious about some of the other histor historic buildings in the park. So maybe would you mind sticking with us and just showing us maybe one or, or two more today? Let's go. Awesome. All right, we made it to the Apgar Village, and I know there's a lot of historic buildings in this area of the park, and I'm just kind of, you know, it's so different, though, than what we just saw up at the North Fork. It seems like a lot of differences in those buildings. 
Some of it is, is just because of the age, uh, different use. A photo of a beautiful sprawling chalet overhanging the wilderness. Text, photograph courtesy of the Glacier National Park Archives. HPF 3915, Sperry Chalet Dormitory with people on porch and balcony, circa 1925. DJ Heilman, photographer. You know, most people can get behind preserving something like uh, Sperry Chalet, oh, for example. Yeah. You know, everyone knows those buildings. Yep. But I'm more interested in those that, that have a more subtle story to tell, that really tell the stories of everyday people and everyday life. And we have a lot of examples of those in the park, things that you yeah. wouldn't think of as a historic resource that should be preserved, such as what we have behind what us here. Is, what? The comfort station's historic, <laughs> Kim? Where we go to the bathroom? In, indeed, <laughs> indeed. They stand before an unassuming brown building with horizontal planks and small white windows in a row at the top. A newspaper article with headline, Mission 66 becomes byword of Glacier Park Cruise, expansion will cover 10 years. Text, article from the Interlake newspaper, February 26, 1956. An article with headline Mission 66 to improve Glacier Park facilities. A photo in the paper of a beautiful lake. Caption, Lake McDonald in Glacier. Text, article from the Interlake newspaper, April 27, 1958. This dates to the period of construction in the Park Service known as Mission 66. Oh the my The 10-year effort from uh, the mid-50s to the mid-60s to improve facilities in the Park Service. By definition, anything over 50 years old is historic. 50 years. We're required by the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966 to preserve those resources okay. unless we determine that they are not necessary or not significant enough to, to warrant that. In, in this case, this contributes to a historic right, environment. Right here, yeah. Indeed. And I just used it, so it's <laughs> functional as well. <laughs> that's the important part. Yeah. Well, that's great. So, um, and you said this was like 1960s it was built? 1960. A building in the park surrounded by visitors. Text, example of historic Mission 66 building, Logan Pass Visitor Center. Is that, Around that there? Mission 66 okay. period, we have okay. numerous examples throughout the park, well, throughout the park service. A building with unique wing-shaped architecture. Text, example of historic Mission 66 building, St. Mary Visitor Center. Yeah. But uh, believe it or not, here we have representative examples of three different types of comfort stations built in the 1960s that you'll see throughout the park, throughout the country in different national parks. Well, now I need to check them off on my list. <laughs> I'll, 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 give you, I'll give you a cheat sheet. You yeah. can find each style. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Kim, for being with us today. I sure learned a lot about historic buildings here in Glacier National Park, but also just the importance of historic buildings to all of our national parks as well as our country and it's just great to know that we're protecting and preserving these uh, for future people to know about they're not museum pieces they're to be used they become part of our continuing national story yeah and i'm looking for it i'll maybe someday when i'm older i'm not gonna say old but older i'll come back and i'll reuse this at so least you'll appreciate <laughs> it more <laughs> Thanks again, everybody. Thanks again, Kim. Thanks for joining us. And stay tuned because we've got a lot of more. Uh, this summer, we have a lot more great science videos on the way. And I know you're going to enjoy them. So stick with us. We'll see you again next time. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Goodbye.